we'll go ahead and start. And there they are. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Business Awareness Thursday with Lush. I am your girl, Kimberly, publicist and founder of Lush Consulting Firm. Of course, this show is brought to you by Queen Fit Activewear as well as Lush Consulting Firm. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting with um, Howard of University Law, um, Marcus Fox. Good afternoon. Uh, Fox Law Firm, LLC. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for having me. And take your time out of your busy schedule. I know as an attorney, <laughs> that's kind of hard. Um, of course, you know that this was actually started to shed light and uh, bring awareness to different businesses, entrepreneurs, things of that nature. So you can be aware of everything that's going on in the city, what people are out here doing, as well as inspire you to basically jump out there and get out your own way. Because people that look like us can be attorneys, as you can see, and we can do great things. Um, so my first question is, how many years have you been an attorney now? Uh, I graduated from law school in 2005. Okay. Uh, I officially began practicing that summer and was admitted to the bar in 2006. 2006. So, since 2006. Okay. As a undergrad and at the university you went to the University of Florida right um, what when you went there initially was your study your main study is to go in and become a, a lawyer yes really mm -hmm. Wow that's the first I know a lot of times <laughs> when you go in you you want to do one thing and then you're like nah well that's good you stuck to it mm -hmm. so what what made you decide that um, Funny story is when I was young, my dad was one of those guys who used to make me sit in front of the TV and watch PBS and educational stations. And I saw a documentary on Thurgood Marshall, believe it or not, when I was in the fourth grade. Wow. And uh, I saw that and I just decided at that point that's what I wanted to do. That's what you wanted to do. And so years passed, you go through school, and that just never changed. And ironically, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Howard for undergrad and I did not go. Wow. And so when it was time for me to go to law school, I decided that that's where I wanted to go. Came back full circle. Just like that. So it was meant. Mm -hmm. So how much schooling does that take to be an attorney? Uh, to be an attorney, you you got to go to school for undergrad, mm -hmm. which generally will take you about four years. And then you go to law school, which will take you three years. Okay. And then most people will attempt to take the bar right after law school, which is not actually a school exam. Okay. But it's, uh, it's another testing period that you have to take. So once you go to undergrad for four years, three years of law school, generally, take your exam, you can be admitted to the bar. That exam, how hard is it? It's hard. It's hard. It's how been many, hard. How many chances it took you? Uh, Alabama bar passed on the first try. Okay. Cool. Where, what other state did you? I attempted to do Florida bar, and the first time I took the Florida bar, I missed it by a few points. But Alabama I took passed. So Alabama, it was meant for you to pass it I on the first so. round. <laughs> I suppose so. As a student, what would you say one of the, your biggest challenges was entering into law school, or just sticking with it throughout undergrad as well? Uh, I think that the most difficult part about law school is that if you enter into a certain course of study. In undergrad, generally everything that you take with the exception of electives is going to be in that track. And in order for you to get a law degree, they usually require you to take a wide variety of subjects. So I think the most important thing about law school is that you learn how to learn. Right. Because in order for you to be a lawyer and practice in different areas, if you don't specialize, you kind of have to master that process of learning how to learn different things. Right. Right. Every right. case presents a different thing. Exactly. Different areas present different things. Now, obviously, I don't, I don't practice maritime law or anything like that. But mm -hmm. in law school, you may take a class where they ask you to learn maritime law for right. a semester, or tort law, or constitutional law, or uh, employment law. And so you you don't get an opportunity to just narrow in on one thought process. You uh -huh. kind of have to learn how to train yourself to learn different things. So. Gotcha. So are you originally from Mobile, Alabama? I'm originally from Florida. Florida. Okay. What 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 made you choose the port city? Uh, I was recruited to come here 
uh, by a firm. Uh, I was actually sending out applications to people that were listed with the University of Florida Law School uh, job placement mm -hmm. service. And there was a firm in Mobile that uh, returned one of my inquiries. Mm -hmm. And they practiced in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee at the time. Okay. I came here, I clerked in the summer uh, for one term and then was extended for the second part of that term. I went back uh, and they made an offer to me and it was a good, ex it was a good experience for me. Uh, I felt like Mobile would be a good place to get my feet dirty, so I came back. Well, there it is. Those that that's just tuning in, I'm here speaking with attorney Marcus Fox, um, attorney of Fox Law Firm, LLC. Um, if you're just tuning in, if you don't mind, please like and share. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with the, with the interview and, and get more information from him as far as what practice he practices and things of that nature. So what practice do you practice? Uh, as a solo practitioner, and that generally means I'm one person, uh, the law firm is primarily built around the skills that I bring to the firm. I don't have other associates that work uh, with me. So I have a background in what they call complex litigation, which is civil litigation, which is basically like business and insurance litigation. I also have a background as a former prosecutor, so I bring a good amount of criminal knowledge mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I'm a trial attorney, so I've tried dozens and dozens of cases at this point over my career. So my practice right now is very heavily concentrated in major crimes defense. Gotcha. Okay. However, I do handle civil matters, some probate, and some small business lit. So how long it, has it been since you established your solo firm? Uh, I would say 20, probably 2012, officially. Uh, 2011 is when I left the DA's office. Mm -hmm. Uh, and somewhere in between 2011 and 2012, uh, I took up my first case. And at that time, I had a briefcase and some printout business cards, and right. that was about it. And from there, I've been able to progress to today. Okay. Well, I, um, I actually watched one of your videos, The Brief, and I saw where you talked about your logo and what it symbolized. Right. Could you explain to our viewers what that logo means? Um, the logo is uh, it's an African symbol, which if you translate, and the, the, it comes from a symbol language, so all the symbols have a specific meaning. Mm -hmm. And this one, in the context of our business, means um, basically life changes. Mm -hmm. uh, the motto of the firm is seeing you through the trials of life. Mm -hmm. That symbol symbolizing that when people come into contact with the legal system, a lot of times it's their first time. A lot of times it's something very important to them. Right. And so... It symbolizes the fact that our representation or my representation is to see you through that change in your life. Right. And to properly, you know, represent you and stand beside you during that period. Uh, and those things are trials to people, you know, exactly. positive or negative. Uh, when we say we go through trials and tribulations, these cases represent trials for people, not just in a courtroom, but in life. Right. So that's what that symbol. So that is interesting. Um, because when I watched it, I wasn't thinking, I'm just thinking you're going to say this mean that, but when you broke it down, I was like, okay. So. A lot of people think it's like there's an O in there, right. there's an X in there. Right. You know, no, it, it doesn't have that, that meaning. It actually comes from a place, if you Google it, uh, it's there. Yeah. I, I researched. I was like, okay, yeah. that's, that's unique. So you're being a former prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And now an, a defense attorney. Mm -hmm. I know that is like a huge upper hand for your clients. What would you say the benefit of a, a, for a client would that be? Uh, probably the first thing is just experience on the other side of the table so that you know the parts that go into a case being prosecuted, you know the process that goes into a case going from start to finish, you mm -hmm. know somewhat, even though this is a new administration, a lot of those people are new, mm -hmm. you know generally what it takes for a case to start and finish. Right. Uh, the next thing will probably just be uh, familiarity with the courts, mm -hmm. familiarity with the judges, and an understanding of the relationships that are involved and how things work from law enforcement to attorneys to the DA's office. Uh, and being able to command those relationships and that experience mm -hmm. 
on a daily basis. Right. Uh, so you don't come into a situation blind, wondering what's going to happen in a case. Uh, you always have a roadmap for where you want to go. And as a DA, probably the most important thing is in my time as a DA, I tried dozens and dozens of cases. Mm -hmm. And so you may come into a situation where you have a lawyer who's a great lawyer but doesn't really try a lot of cases in order for you to have opportunity to get not only the best opportunity for resolution, mm -hmm. but you need somebody who's been there. Right, uh, exactly. And done it on both sides of the table, and that's an advantage. That's a huge advantage. Is there a lot of attorneys that have, like, do that, where they've been prosecutors and then? Uh, I wouldn't say there's a lot, but right now in the defense bar, we, we have a fair amount. Okay. Uh, there are a good number of people that have started that way. So explain first chair trials. What's the difference from that type of trial from others? If you had the opportunity to do it, mm -hmm. and you're a young attorney just starting off on a, a serious case, mm -hmm. normally you're going to try that case with somebody else. Right. Uh, when you get to a level where you can try a case by yourself, that mm -hmm. means you have the ability to look at a case, see a case, plan a case, create a strategy for that case and execute that trial all by yourself without having to worry about whether or not you need some assistance to complete the trial. So when you see people in job placements and legal postings saying first chair trials, it's important that people know that you were the person making those decisions and that you were successful in doing that. Great. What would you say, what made you come to the other side of the table? Uh, I was actually falsely accused of a crime myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I was arrested, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I chose the route that I would defend myself to the end. Right. Uh, there were no deals to be made, uh, despite conversations, you know, encouragement that if I was not going to consider certain things that I should enter my resignation, which I did. Uh, it took me nearly two years to get to trial. I was found not guilty in 37 minutes, roughly. Wow. Uh, which was a long saga in and of itself. Right. But after that, I pledged that I would represent people the way that I wanted to be represented. That's right. And uh, I did not look back from that day. I and I respect you for that. I, <laughs> I know a lot of people have so much respect for you for that because when you're on the other side of the situation and you're like... Yeah, and to some degree, you know, you don't, you don't want to have people kind of characterizing it as something like street cred. Or, right. Because I think that kind of trivializes a lot of things. Right. But it is a benefit to my guys and my young ladies and women in general to know that at one point I sat on that same side of the table as you. So I take all your questions, all your information, all of your work as though it were me sitting on that side of the table. You don't have to worry whether or not I understand what it means to have your life in somebody else's hands. Right. Right. And, right. And, uh, you know, I was telling a guy uh, not too long ago, mm -hmm. they carried me into the same jail that you're in at exactly. one point. So we're on an understanding about how serious this situation is. So right. It was unfortunate, but that was a cost that had to be paid for a certain experience. So. Right. Um, as far as with, I know you once worked with the youth. Do you still work with the youth for us? I do. Um, I know you... Like I said, I was reviewing all your videos, <laughs> and I know you basically was talking about youth, youthful offender. Right. What are the benefits and importance of that? Um, youthful offender is important for a couple of reasons, and the first one is that if you're a parent mm -hmm. or a young person under 21, always make the best effort to get that youthful offender because youthful offender isn't actually an offense, mm -hmm. it's a status. Mm. Okay? And it means no matter whether you're guilty or innocent, that record that you get as a youthful offender is sealed. You don't have to answer to it, you don't have to tell anybody about it. If they ask you on the job application, you can say no, I've never been convicted, I've never been arrested, things of that nature. Um, and the record is actually sealed from background checks as well. So what we know is young people make mistakes. Right. Okay. Young people make serious mistakes. Yes. And if you can't cover that, mm -hmm. then a young person could be reliving that mistake from now till they're 50. Exactly. Uh, so the other thing that, that young people and parents need to do is it is easier to get a youthful offender 
when a young person is tied to a community mm -hmm. such that if they get in trouble, I can point to this person and say, this person can speak for my child. This person can speak for my education. This person can speak for my ability to be rehabilitated on my employment history. Mm -hmm. Always have those connections working. Keep your children active in things so mm -hmm. that if they do fall into something, those people can also stand on that child's behalf or that young person's behalf and say, hey, if you give them an opportunity, they're going to turn this thing around and go forward and be productive citizens. So don't think mm -hmm. that the time for a young person to be connected to a community is when they get charged. The time for that is before then. Right. Have you, saw, have, have you seen where a lot of those been denied? I wouldn't say a lot, but they, they're they denied. Do. Yeah, serious crimes. It's hard for you to get a youthful offender. Right. Uh, but I will say this about the bench that we have in Mobile. Mm -hmm. I have seen judges grant youthful offender on robbery cases. Mm -hmm. I have seen them grant youthful offender on assault cases. I've seen them outright deny some that I felt like should have been granted. Mm -hmm. But the key is to always come in there prepared mm -hmm. and to take the best possible shot that you can and get it because it's, it's a possibility that you could. Right. It's always that possibility. So um, firm on the move. I know you you were speaking with the youth. I know you did a, you did something with Triple Threat Basketball Camp mm -hmm. where you spoke with them a couple of years ago. Do you still find time to go into the schools and speak or do things in the community with the youth? Admittedly, I don't I don't keep up with posting it as much as I should, oh, but okay. um, just most recently uh, I participated in a criminal justice reform forum in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. uh, I was privileged to be able to speak uh, at the University of Florida Alumni Banquet for Students and Alumni. Mm -hmm. um, the year past, I also had an opportunity to speak at a community awards where there were various uh, student groups there mm -hmm. uh, in Pensacola within the last year. Um, most people that I deal with in Mobile mm -hmm. will reach out to me for certain youth things. Now, I may not blast it all over the internet. Right. But I grew up in an inner city school. You know, I was in a magnet program, was in a school with barbed wire on the fences. So it's important wow. that somebody came to see about me. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So now that I'm on this side, if you call me and I can make it, I'll beat it. Right. You know, I may not be able to make everything, right. but because if, if young people don't know, whose fault is that? Ours. If they don't see it, they don't know. It. Right, that's and true. So that's why what you're doing is important. And uh, like you said, it's busy schedule or not, you know, you you have a platform here where you can showcase. I see you had a barber on, you had a banker on, you had you had all different types of people so that that people know. Right, people you know, know we're capable of doing anything. That's and right. They'll only know that if they see that. So that's, that's right. Important. That's true. I appreciate it. So Miranda writes, explain the. The, the actual importance of people knowing and understanding the man, Miranda rights. I know we hear it all the time, but I don't think everybody really understands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it is, uh, it's kind of a complex thing to deal with, but the most simple thing to start with is you're always entitled to your Miranda rights. Right. The problem is most people don't exercise People right. think they can talk their way through something. Just shut up. If they <laughs> tell this guy something, he's going to believe what you say. Right. Or even if you're telling the truth. At a point in which you're being investigated mm -hmm. or you've been charged mm -hmm. or you've been arrested, you have a right to have an attorney present. You do not have to give statements without an attorney present. It's that simple. simple. Uh, the fact that you think you're the smartest guy on the block or you're the smartest young lady that ever walked the face of the earth doesn't change the fact that you're entitled to have a lawyer. When I was charged with a crime, I had a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. Right. You can't be better than me in this situation. Right. So Miranda rights function this way. It gives you a certain level of protection and having representation. If someone does not read you your Miranda rights and you voluntarily offer them information, you may not have protection for that. There are different ways that it can or can't be. Um, if you try to invoke your Miranda rights or exercise them saying, I don't want to participate in this conversation without a lawyer, and they continue, then you can protect that as well. So the main thing to remember is you always have a right to have a lawyer present. Right. And whether they tell you that or not, you need to know that. 
Exactly. And uh, when it is important for you, you need to exercise those rights. That's it. So, you heard it here. You have rights. Use them. So, um, a lot, I see a lot of people. Well, I watch TV. You see all yeah. those cop pictures, and they just talking and talking, and they yeah. they ruining themselves. Like, <laughs> I mean, let's just be real. Right. Um, so, I know people are often faced with adversities, and as an attorney, you also had your share of unfairness um, with what happened here in the city. What kept you going after that situation, being that you were a prosecutor, and then you went through that for those number of years, and then you decided, guess what, I'm going on the other side because how I had to defend me is some other people that's going through that same situation. Well, to be fair, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a choice that I made mm -hmm. as much as a choice that was placed upon me at the time. Gotcha. Uh, during that time while the case was pending, I attempted to apply for jobs and I would get all the way through the process and very much like people who have criminal records, I get all the way to the end and they say, well, you know, you got this, we can't hire you. Wow. And this is a guy who's been working, I've served the state, I've done all my, you know, service to, to society and to uh, the legal community in general, mm -hmm. but because I had that pending case, I couldn't get a job. And uh, I have no exception about recognizing I got a call from a judge I won't say his name and I was unaware that they had a system whereby people who could not afford lawyers you know could apply for one mm -hmm. and a judge called me and told me that I had been appointed to a case I wasn't even practicing law I was somewhere trying to figure out how I was going to get through this trial or anything right like that. so I picked up my briefcase I printed out some business cards on a printer I went down and I saw my first client and from that day forward, I just refused to relent. Right. Know? And it was really more of a question of whether or not I would ever let them see me fail or, or give in. And exactly. that just wasn't going to happen. You right. Know? So it wasn't like I just dreamed that this was going to happen this way. Right. It was something that, you know, it was something that was placed upon me. You know? Right. And I embraced it. And once I was able to start working on behalf of people, um, there's nothing like it. Right. Uh, and I've served on both sides of the table now. So anybody who has a problem with that, they got to understand it. In order for the system to maintain integrity, two sides have to be equally involved. Right. In order for rights to be protected on all sides. That's right. And that's, that's what I've been trying to do. Great. So, one word. Use one word to describe... The judicial, judicial system. <laughs> uh, I would say complex. Okay. I would say complex. That's a nice way to put it. That's a, that was a, that's a very nice way to put it. Complex. Yeah. That was a good way to put I it. I would say complex. So wh what, were you say, what would you say the things are just overall as a, because as, you're an entrepreneur, this is your own firm. Um, what would you say the thing that drives you and keep you motivated daily as an entrepreneur, as an attorney? If, if you're just talking about entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you go to law school, you get a law degree, you work for a firm, you work for the state, nobody tells you how to run a business. Right, right. Most people, you know, you have good skills at doing certain things, but you don't know anything about running a business. Right. Uh, the, f the one thing that I think was the first driving factor was that anybody, mm -hmm. including a guy with a pending criminal charge and news reports and people, you know, shaming your name, mm -hmm. can stand up in the middle of the world and say, my name is Marcus Fox or I'm a representative. Right. And I have a service and I'm worth the value. Will you do business with me? And it can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't matter who you are. Right. So the first time that you actually, and I used to, I described it to my friends who went out on their own since I've done it, and I did not do it the way I wanted to, but I did it. Mm -hmm. When you make your first dollar out of thin air, because I know you have a business where you're merchandising now, mm -hmm. the first time that you mm -hmm. got a sale on that first yes. 
two-piece yes. set yes. from the time that you thought about the two-piece set to the time you produced it to the time you had the first sale. Right. That wasn't in Academy, wasn't in Sports Authority, wasn't in Foot Locker. It was Kim's sale. Exactly. Right? Right. That's, that's something you've never experienced before. Right. And it's a level of freedom. Mm-hmm. And empowerment that if you get that first sale, you believe that it's possible that you can get the next one. Right. Right? That's right. You know, and that drives you just on a daily basis. It does. It's not always gonna come. Right. Every day. But exactly if you right. stick with it and you are willing to fail, you're willing to deal with the uncertainty of not knowing when the next one will come, mm-hmm. you'll always progress. That's right. On the other end is of fear, there's success. There it is. You gotta try some stuff. That's right. <laughs> Real simple. Just try some stuff. That's it. So let our viewers know um, how they can get in contact with you if they need legal advice or need you to represent them. Uh, I've got a. If we're on Facebook, I've got a Facebook business page. Mm-hmm. My telephone number I can be reached at is there. Fox Law Firm LLC dot com is the website. Um, you can directly contact me through those means, and. Uh, You'll be talking to me. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Well, congrats on on your success. Thanks. All that you you've done, all that you've overcome, things of that nature. Um, I know I read where you received numerous awards for your efforts, um, volunteering, all that great stuff. We appreciate it. So before we go, share something that our viewers may not know about you. I know I see different things you do outside of the law firm. <laughs> As far as like, well, I just asked, you still do photography? I do. Okay. I do. Um, over the Christmas break, uh, I went back to Fort Lauderdale Beach, mm-hmm. which is the beach I used to go to when I was a kid, and they had a basketball court out there that me and my guys used to go to when we played mm-hmm. ball in high school. And uh, just like a way to start my year, I spent a couple days on the beach, I photographed you know, the court that I used to play at as a kid. Right. Uh, I used to skateboard up and down that boardwalk, and I got some photographs there, you know, with my old skate skate gear and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of a walk back to walk forward. So I don't do a lot of photography for other people anymore. Right. But uh, I do think in the age of social media and digital stuff, mm-hmm. if we think back to our folks, your people have physical pictures everywhere. Right. Right. So here we are in the digital age. We got everything in a cell phone. Right. But if you have kids in the future, what are you gonna do? Have your kids a cell phone? Right. So the photographs are just a way to capture time. And yes. I think we would all be, be better served to if you got some good pictures of times that are important in your life. Right. Just print them out. Print them. You know, You're twenty, right. thirty years from now, your kids will pull those print pictures out and That's say, right. you know, this was, this is what I, what That's I like. That's true. Was. Because as a child, I often have went back to our family photo album, this thick. What are you going to do? Hand down the iPhone 4? Right. You know what I'm saying? You, right. Do you still have your iPhone 2? You know, who knows? Like, iPhone, Android. Right. So just think, 30 years from now, when your kids want to look back on moments that they had, you can't hand them the cell phone. Cell phone will probably be dead by then. So I'm starting, I'm going to start printing photos. <laughs> I like, seriously, that yeah. makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. This was good. And you play basketball? I used to. Okay. I used to. I still play a little bit of old man ball, but I recently <laughs> had knee surgery. So oh, okay. the game game is a lot slower and a lot lower for me. Right, like right. So, no more. No, 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 no. All <laughs> okay. those old pictures of me high flying, those are old, old. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. okay. So as we close out, if you can um, give some encouraging words to those that may need that push or afraid to jump out on faith, what are some encouraging words that you could provide? Uh, when I was going through what I was going through, uh, there's a scripture about the people of Israel going from the term was faith to faith, right? Mm-hmm. And so when you read about that scripture, it meant that the people, while they were in that trial, mm-hmm. were given the measure of faith that they needed for the place that they were at so that they could get to the next level. And if they came to another trial, it would be by faith that they would be given the next the, level of faith. Right. So we as a people, we tend to think beyond where we are and question whether or not we can get to that place. That's true. But it has always been said and it has been proven for most people. You're going to get what you need 
to get past where you are. Right. But you got to have faith in getting past where you are. That's right. And so count the small victories um, and maximize the day. When I had zero dollars in my pocket, no car to speak of, two pairs of shoes, the only thing I could control was how much I put into that one day. You maximize the day. That's right. And just be vigilant and sure that you'll get what you need to get from where you are. That's right. Well, this has been an awesome, an awesome, awesome, awesome interview. Um, for those who come in, we're not ignoring you. After this is over, we will, uh, rip, well, I'll um, actually come in on there. If it's something that he can answer, I'll um, shoot him a screenshot because I don't think he's as active on Facebook <laughs> as any, anymore as he used to be. So I'll get the questions to him. Um, just make sure you like and share this post. I appreciate those that's, that's watching. Um, Business Awareness Thursday, as you know, is now on the iHeartRadio app and iTunes. So please subscribe if you have not. Big time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> also, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And look for more events that's happening with Lush Consulting Firm. Have a lot of events that's coming up this year. Just stay connected by liking the Lush Consulting Firm page on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, that's it. There you have it. We'll see you later. Thanks for tuning in.